Welcome to the tutorial on making transparent custom minis. As of version 1.4 of Calpi, Calpi will no longer do any kind of shader swapping to try to uh, implement transparent uh, minis. So, in order to make a transparent mini, you will have to use the shiv transparency trick. The shiv transparency trick allows you to add transparent parts to your mini without needing Calpi to change any shaders, without needing uh, Calpi uh, to do um, anything at all. Uh, in fact, you can have your custom mini be a creature kind and still get your transparency. And that's what this tu tutorial is all about. So, a little bit of theory first. How do we do this? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our custom mini and break it down into two or more parts. One part will be the mesh with the opaque shader, and one part will be the mesh with the transparent shader. So basically, anything that is solid color will be in this one section, and anything that we want to be transparent, we're going to have in the other section. Now, when Tailspire starts up, it looks for all shaders and changes them to the Tailspire shader. This is good for our normal opaque um, component because it is what causes the vibrant colors as opposed to the muted colors. But it is not good for anything that needs transparency because the Tailspire shader doesn't support transparency. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our a mesh with the transparent shader and lock it away in a safe to make sure that Tailspire is unable to access it and therefore change it. So that way, when Tailspire starts, it will go and change our opaque shader to a Tailspire shader, but because our transparent shader is in our safe, it will remain um, unchanged. And that means we can have some transparent components in our mini. So now, that's the theory. How do we actually implement that in technical terms? Well, what Shiv discovered is that if we have an armature and place uh, any kind of a mesh um, in the armature, Tailspire doesn't see that. Uh, this makes sense because Tailspire uh, isn't expecting to have animated uh, minis and therefore it will ignore the armature. Um, what's an armature, you may ask? An armature is basically a skeletal system that allows you to animate minis. So normally you would create kind of a skeleton of bones, then you use weight mapping to uh, say which parts of the mini move with each of the bones, and, there, uh, and then by um, rotating those bones you can animate your mini. Don't worry, that's all complicated stuff, uh, that's, a, that's an advanced topic, but you don't need to understand any of that to make this work. We can actually use just a single bone ar ar armature, the default that Blender creates, and that's good enough. What we're going to do is we're going to take our mesh um, with the transparent parent shader. We're going to parent uh, that mesh to that single bone, and that's going to lock it away in the armature. And then when Tailspire starts, once again, it's going to find our opaque shader and turn that to a Tailspire shader, but it's not going to find anything within the armature, uh, and it's going to ignore that, and therefore leave our transparent shader as is. Okay, let's get started. Um, I've loaded uh, my object here into Blender. You can use any other 3D editing software. I just happen to use Blender because it's free and powerful. Uh, so, First thing we, not, and we need to do is divide our object into the, uh, the opaque uh, mesh and the transparent mesh. Now, I happen to have already done that here. If I move this over a bit, uh, we can see that I've got uh, the solid uh, portion of it and I've got the transparent portion of it. Now, if you uh, did not have that separated out yet, uh, you can just select your uh, your mesh uh, and duplicate it so that we have two copies. 
then on one of the, <clears throat> uh, on one of them, take it into edit mode and delete out all the faces that are of the transparent material. Um, go back to object mode, edit the other uh, copy, and there do the opposite. Uh, select all the faces uh, that are not transparent and uh, remove those. So then you will end up with two objects, one that's basically got all the solid stuff and one that has all the transparent stuff. Now, I like to uh, create my materials here in Blender. Uh, that makes it easier when I take it into Unity. Um, so if we click on uh, our, uh, our transparent uh, mesh, we can see that we have a, um, an alpha, either an alpha value, or in this case, I'm using a alpha uh, texture. And we can see that we've uh, got it, uh, the blend mode set to um, alpha blend so that we actually get transparency. Uh, make sure not to forget this. If you leave this in opaque, then your um, mesh is going to be opaque. It's not going to have any of that alpha. So alpha blend. Okay, uh, if I click on the other part of our object, you can see there's a different material. Uh, this one is lantern material and it does not have any transparency, but has other things like uh, roughness, metallic, whatever. Um, setting up the materials, that's kind of beyond this tutorial. You can get lots of videos on how to um, set up the materials in, uh, in Blender. So once we have that, we need to do the shiv transparency trick, which is to um, hide away part of our object. Now, <clears throat> we want to hide the part that is transparent. The rest of it, we want to keep exposed so that it will get the Tailspire shader so our colors look good, but we want to hide the transparent part of it so that it does not get the shader changed. So we're going to go to, um, in object mode, we're going to go to add and we're going to go to armature. Okay. This in Blender will create an armature with a single bone. So all we need, we're not going to play with this uh, armature at all because that bone is there just to hide the one uh, mesh material from Tailspire. We're not going to use it to animate this object at all. Okay, so now you can see we've got an armature here. I'm going to rename this. I like to uh, call this something like hidden, protected, or anything like that. And now I'm going to take the, uh, select the uh, material that we want to hide. In this case, that's the glass. Uh, control click on our armature of hidden. And then while we're on the layout, we're going, going to go control P. And I usually just go with uh, automatic weights. And you can see now our glass disappeared and it is now under um, the hidden armature. Okay. So you can see the lantern body is outside the armature. The glass is on the inside of the armature. Okay, so that should be it. Um, I don't have, I've already deleted my light and, um, and camera, so that's good. I'm now just going to export this as FBX. I'm going to export as FBX. Uh, what I like to do is I like to go over here under path mode and select copy and then click this little icon. What that does is all of the textures that we have um, used in the material will get embedded inside the FBX uh, so that when we take it into Unity, it's easier to extract those uh, uh, textures out. Okay, and now I'm going to save it as, uh, as Lantern FBX here uh, and export. Okay, so here we are in Unity now. I've opened up a, um, my template uh, 
uh, project. It's just a 3D project with the um, editor script in there so that I've got the uh, build asset bundles. Uh, so I'm going to create a folder here, content. I'm going to try to spell it right. Um, and then I like to create my uh, mesh material textures. Um, again, all of this uh, hierarchy, it's not necessary. I just like to do that to keep it organized, um, but you could all throw it into one folder and uh, it would still work. Okay, so I'm going to go into our mesh. I'm going to import So here's our lantern that um, we've imported. Uh, so under model, um, I turn off all of this. I turn on preserve um, hierarchy and definitely reuse. Then we're going to go over to the rig. Now, normally for static minis, I uh, recommend turning <coughs> the rig off. But in this case, do not do that. Let me say that again. Do not do that. I'm going to say it one more time. Do not do that. I speak from experience. I turned this off and spent the next uh, half an hour trying to figure out why this isn't working. Obviously, if we are trying to hide a mesh inside our armature, we can't turn that armature off. Otherwise, there's no place to hide. So yes, you want to uh, switch this to legacy. Animations, we're not interested in any, any animations, so I'm going to just turn that off. And now on the uh, materials, we are going to first extract our textures. I'm going to put that in the texture, textures folder. Uh, yes, if you have a normal map, uh, it'll probably complain about it. You can just hit fix now. Um, then we're going to extract our materials. I'm going to put that in the materials folder. And there is our <coughs> uh, there is our materials applied. Um, the preview uh, sometimes disappears like this. Um, that's nothing to be overly concerned about. Um, so we've got our Lantern here. I'm going to look at our materials. I'm going to double check our materials to make sure that they're all set up correctly. So we can see that um, our glass is transparent, but I was using a um, I was using a transparency texture. So I'm going to go to my texture. Oh, and there it is. And I'm going to put that there. Um, now let's look at the other material. So here we've got the diffuse, we've got the normal map. That's looking pretty good, but we also had a metallic smooth map for that. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to reduce the smoothness to something like that, let's say. Um, I want to also double check um, here on all my textures. I want to make them read it right. This one has alpha. Read it right. Read it right. Okay, so now all our um, uh, textures are read-write, and I think the materials are now good. This one's transparent, this one is opaque, uh, and it has all that. Okay, so now we're going to take our lantern and throw it into the scene, and there it is.
Okay. Now, the one thing you will note is that the transparency level in Unity is um, quite a bit different from what will show up in Tailspire. Um, in Unity, it's a lot uh, more clear. You can see right now that you can't really see the um, the tinted or like the the um, window at all. We're seeing right through it. It doesn't have a tint, whereas in Tailspire it tends to have a, a bigger tint. I think actually, I think what we want to do uh, here actually we've got the metallic set as our alpha, so I'm going to apply the uh, that to metallic. There we go. Okay, that, that's looking better. Okay, that's that's why. So yes, uh, going back to the material here, um, you can see that our setting currently is that metallic is carrying the alpha. So you want your alpha map under metallic. If you would switch to this, then you can have your um, uh, your uh, transparency map under albedo instead. You can play with those. Okay, <clears throat> so now we've got our uh, lantern here. It looks uh, ready. Uh, I'm not going to bother um, adding the flame here, um, uh, as you saw in my uh, uh, in my proof of purchase or pr proof of concept uh, video. I added a, a flame to this. Um, that's nothing special. We that's regular Unity stuff, and feel free to add. Uh, more to that. So uh, the other thing that you should notice here is in Blender, the glass we put under the armature. When it comes into Unity, um, it tends to show up outside the armature, but it's still remembering that it is under the armature. So um, it should still work fine. Um, even though it doesn't appear to be under the armature, uh, just don't go really adjusting that because that can break things. Okay, so now we've got the lantern. Um, we're going to create an original prefab. So I'm going to copy that, create a new. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I, I like to do that. I like to um, uh, go to rename this, copy the name, and then here when I'm creating a new one, I will just paste it in because uh, Unity has a bug that in some cases when you create a new asset bundle um, name, it won't allow you to type. So by pasting it in, that seems to work. Uh, I'm going to set these all to the same asset bundle. Theoretically, it shouldn't be necessary, but um, I do it just in case. And now we're going to probably want to add our um, info.txt file and our portrait.png. Um, I just grabbed that from another project and copied it in. So with the magic of editing, let it appear. And as if by magic, it does. Okay, so I'm going to edit. I'm going to take a screen capture here, actually. Cheat a little bit. Um, and then I will edit that portrait file. Yes, if I was doing this for real, I would have a better screen capture, but you get the idea. Okay, save that. <clears throat> okay, so there's our, uh, our portrait. I'm going to add that to our uh, file. I'm going to double check the portrait. Um, I'm not using a, a clear background, so I don't need the alpha as transparency, uh, transparent, but 
Um, if you want to use a icon with a transparent background, you can select that. You definitely need to select the read write. And uh, you also definitely need to set this to none. If you do not set compression to none for your portrait, it will not work. Your other texture files, they can have a compression, but your portrait cannot. Okay, and now I'm going to edit the uh, info.txt. Okay, so this is a lantern. Creature, con I mean, uh, the kind, we can keep it as creature, no problem. Um, effect will still work uh, in Calpy 1.4. It will just do the exact same thing as creature. There won't be any uh, differentiation anymore. Um, I'll keep the type around for uh, backwards compatibility and for potentially some differences in the future, but as of uh, Calpy 1.4, creature and effect will do the same thing. I'm going to keep it in a test group. Uh, this is a lantern tutorial tags lantern test, sure. Lord Ashes, sure, sure, sure. Don't need any of those. That's good enough. Okay, so um, now we've got this. Uh, we need to make that also part of our asset bundle. So double check. Um, we're checking down here to make sure everything is part of the asset bundle. So yes, 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 yes. Excellent. So we're ready to build our um, asset bundle. I'm going to build asset bundle. Again, note that my prefab name and my asset bundle are the same name. Um, again, that is a requirement. Um, Calpy will, or sorry, Calp will try to compensate for that if you didn't do that. But um, the general rule is asset bundle, file name, and prefab should all be the same name. Okay, so we've built our asset bundle. And if you're using my uh, improved script, um, you will find that under asset bundles, it's made the lovely hierarchy for you. So custom data is there, mini subfolder, and then your um, asset will be in its own nice little folder. Uh, that way you can theoretically just grab this whole um, custom assets, create a new uh, folder, uh, or pack folder for it, and you're good to go. Uh, in my case, I've already got a local content folder, so I'm going to actually just go down to the lantern level, cut that, and <clears throat> then I'm going to go to my local content. Okay, so I've already created a local content file here. If you have not, just in your plugins install folder, make sure you are in the plugins install folder. Um, Bepinex creates a cached um, fol uh, folder and an install folder. You want to be in the install folder. Um, you can create a folder there. Uh, my recommendation is something like local content in square brackets. Um, the reason for the square brackets is that way Alphabetically, it appears first, and that means if you have any um, like configurations for uh, plugins, uh, the file access plugin will look at those first. So basically, it kind of gets higher priority. Um, for custom minis, it doesn't really matter. I just like the square brackets because it's easy, then the folder is easy to find.
Um, I've already got stuff uh, registered here, so I'm going to unregister that. <clears throat> Don't know why it toggled. Um, so yes, if you are um, trying to add new content, you should have your local content folder with a custom data um, subfolder. And then a subfolder of minis is optional, but I like to do it for um, organizational sake. And now I'm going to delete the old lantern that I had here and paste in our new lantern. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. This should now be ready to run in Tailspire. So let's give that a try. Wait, wait, I just about made a big mistake. This is one of the most common mistakes that people make. Um, they run Tailspire, their pack doesn't load, and they start to complain what's going on. When a pack is registered in Tailspire, Tailspire needs to rename the custom data folder to assets. Uh, this is necessary to make it work with Core TS, um, and it's a way to identify that the pack has been already registered. If you have some subfolder of that open, so for right now, for example, I'm under custom data minis, it will not be able to rename that folder, and basically the pack will fail to register. This I've made this mistake so many times. So remember, when you add any minis, either close um, the uh, Windows Explorer altogether, or move out to the local content folder so that the custom data folder can be renamed. So let's fire up. Okay. Let's open up a new screen. Okay, so I'm going to go to creatures. Um, I put it under test. There's our lantern. So you can see that um, the lantern portion has been changed by Tailspire to be um, the uh, Tailspire shader, but you can see that the glass has remained the standard. So we can see that right now, looking at that glass, we can actually see inside. We can see the back portion of that uh, lantern, so it is now being transparent, yet the rest of the object is solid. So that is how you can create transparent objects in Tailspire without needing uh, Calpia systems. Now, in theory, you do need a little bit of Calpia assistance still. Uh, the reason for that is that when the object is hidden, Tailspire again knows only about the mesh and shader outside the armature. So normally it would only hide the opaque part and our transparent part would remain around. That's where Calpi does come in and Cal uh, anytime the object is hidden, um, either due to the hide uh, command or the height bar, um, it will uh, look and see if the object contains any parts that are hidden in the armature, and it will hide those also. So if I go and hide this, we can see that the whole object has hidden. 
and if we now reveal it, <clears throat> we can see that the whole object has come back. So yeah, that's how you make transparent um, objects in uh, Tailspire, um, starting with the uh, Calpy 1.4. I mean, you can use this trick on previous versions of Calpy, but it will be necessary starting with Calpy 1.4 because there will no longer be any kind of support for shader swapping by Calpy. So some additional notes. Um, some people may be asking, well, what about cutouts? Can we still use cutouts? Um, and the answer is sort of. Obviously, one way that you could do cutouts is to do an actual mesh cutout and cut the pieces out of your actual mesh. Now, that kind of defeats the purpose of cutouts by texture uh, because obviously the purpose of uh, doing cutouts on the texture level is so that you don't have to modify the mesh. So can we do cutouts using the texture um, as opposed to having to do the cutout in the mesh? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can, but there is a caveat. In order for you to use the cutout, you need to use the original shader. So same thing uh, with transparency. In order to use transparency, you need to use the original shader, not the tail spire shader. So what that means is if you want to do a cutout, the cutout needs to be in the part of the mesh that's safeguarded in the armature. So why is that a problem? Well, the problem is that if you are dealing with a transparent um, material, the, the fact that its colors are not vibrant like the TS shader doesn't really make a big difference or deal because they're transparent. You're, you're, you're going to be losing that color anyways because it's see-through. But that difference will be a lot more visible if you use cutouts because cutouts by their very nature have a part that's solid and have a part that is cut out. So if we need to use the original shader for the for implementing cutouts, that means whatever part of your cutout that's solid is going to be solid, but it's going to be using the standard shader or whatever shader you want. It's not going to be using the tail spire shader. So what that means is the colors on it aren't going to be as bright and vibrant as they would be if you were using the tail spire shader. So depending on what you're trying to do, this solution is viable or not. If the part that you're trying to use cutout with is um, a separate piece of your uh, <clears throat> of your mesh, um, you know, a, a prop, for example, or parts of a clothing, where you won't have a mix of the tail spire shader color and the part that's going to have the cutout, it'll be fine because there the the fact that the color is somewhat different isn't going to be as obvious. But if you kind of mix them, like if you have a, uh, you know, your clothing and only a portion of it is in the uh, cutout material so that you could do the cutout, you'll see the difference, obviously, because you're going to have part of the clothing is going to be with the TS shader and part of it is going to be with the cutout shader solid part, and then you're going to have the cutout. So there, as soon as the two shaders uh, come, you know, together, the color will be different. So to recap, can you do cutouts? Yes, you can. But the color of the solid part of the cutout will be using the more diffuse or diluted colors and not the tail spire shader colors because the only way to do cutouts is to use the original shader, not the tail spire shader. I hope that um, 
makes sense. And that's about it.